Okay, George, I just passed you the controls. Yes, I'm, uh, man, uh, sorry about that, guys. It just, uh, that's the way it works. Whenever you're about to do something, you know, the, your screen and your computer just acts up. But we're back, we're in, and... Uh, well, who's we? Care. Who's we? Have you cloned yourself? Oh, did I clone myself? <laughs> yeah, because you, yeah, I do that, too. Well, we think this when it's really I think this. That's right. We, yeah, you never noticed that. There's so, fewer, George, you know, that's great to meet you. Go ahead. Great. To, nice to meet you. Yeah, same here, Dale. And uh, it was very interesting uh, presentation and analysis of uh, the market. Uh, I definitely enjoyed listening to you and Blake. Uh, and uh, be honest with you, it's just really great time to be a trader right now with yeah, the volatility so I, that we've been seeing. Yeah. So I'd like to take you back in time a little bit, George, and tell us uh, how it began for you. Uh, and the then dream. we'll get to. You want to you know about the dream, right? Well, yeah, I want to know, uh, you know, the road less traveled that you took. Uh, most traders take that kind of road. They have a bit of a maverick gene within them. Uh, and they're a lot of them just looking to get free. And the markets, uh, they look at a vehicle for them to do so. Uh, how did it start for you? Did you have mentors or were there any books? Uh, I see you use Ranko charts and I want your website, uh, very nice looking. And uh, tell us a little bit about your first entree into the business and what you were doing before that. Absolutely, uh, thank you for that question. Um, like many traders that uh, you started in, in this business, uh, it, you have that, like you said, you, you said it very, very well. You have that gene inside of you that says, I want independence, I want financial freedom, and I don't want to ever, ever answer to a boss. That's the gene that kind of runs in my family, every, every one of us in the family, from my dad to my brother to, to uncles, and, and they're all self-made uh, business people. So I had that, you know, entrepreneurial uh, spirit. Yes, yes. I wanted, I wanted to do something uh, that's different. Uh, you know, a lot of them are in real estate or they're doing their own business, but I wanted something different. And, and uh, you know, after graduating from college and all that stuff, I was looking for direction. And uh, my my dad had his a broker, and his broker, you know, just well dressed uh, guy, came into the office, pitched my dad on. This uh, hot new stock, it's called uh, uh, ValueJet, <laughs> if, if you know what happened there. So ValueJet ended up crashing in the Everglades in Florida, and my dad lost uh, 80 grand uh, in a matter of weeks. And, and that got me, you know, in a way angry. I was like, man, I could do better than that, you know? And, <laughs> You know, like his, his first pick. Pretty high bar, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so blow you know, out eighty grand in two weeks. In two uh, weeks. You know, you uh, you know, you could have been even after two weeks, and then your dad would have felt like he was up eighty. I'm a hero. I would have been yeah. a hero. Right. You know? Great so, story. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was like, okay, and my, and I, I, I see, I, I see the anguish, and it's a real story because. It really set the family back uh, a couple of years, you know, from our goals of buying a house and doing a lot of things. So it was yeah. pretty traumatic. I mean, I'm laughing about it now, yeah. but then it was, you know, I could see it in my dad's face where you know, he's like somebody punched him in the face, in the guts. Yeah. So I was like, I can, I can do better than that. And I started, uh, you know, working for a broker firm as a, as a junior broker initially. And I How do you like cold calling? Fuck no. <laughs> Excuse my French here. But uh, How many yeah, dials a day? I was like, you know, 300 or something like oh, that yeah. at a minimum. Yeah. And, and they throw the book at you, literally, the phone book. And they say, <laughs> from A to Z, let's see what you got. And, you know, funny you asked that question because I remember uh, my, my boss at that point, he had his shoe on my desk. And he goes... If you don't call 300, you're going to get the shoe. <laughs> so, so that was my motivational speech for the day, every yeah. day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, 
immediately I recognized that being a salesman in a brokerage firm was not my niche. That's not what I was meant to do. Okay, so from there, uh, I guess I got lucky, or is, you know, somebody was looking after me here. I ended up going to Barnes and Noble and pick up uh, an Inc. magazine, and I was flip, flipping through it, and they had a big article about uh, day trading and the lavish, the lavish style of the day trader, the vacations, the money, the you know. When was this? Pre two thousand. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, 1998. Nine? Okay, yeah. yeah, two years before the bubble popped. Exactly. Everyone wanted to be a day trader. Day trader. I was like, man, this is the answer to all of my problems right here. Yeah. You know? So what I did is, um, not, not to lengthen this part of the, uh, the conversation, but I, I was like, okay, I need money, and I need to know what the hell I'm, I'm doing. So I, I went and and gathered some money uh, from friends and family and uh, opened an account at a local, I, I live in Dallas, Texas, so there's a, a local day trading firm uh, called Altec Investments at that time. Uh, they had a branch in Dallas and literally it's a floor full of computers and people just sit there and trade all day long. And uh, started uh, the journey there and I thought it's gonna be easy. How hard is it gonna be? Just buy low, sell high and you should be okay, yeah? And quickly, you recognize that there's a lot more to trading than what, what uh, you know, what the salesman is selling. So you gotta, you gotta there's, there's a lot of elements in being successful as a trader that you, not, you, you some of it you catch from books and, and, and from listening to other people, but uh, a lot of it is experiential. So that you Right, so you can't learn experience I ask this question of almost every guest. How many years did it take you to make some breakthroughs and start to become consistent? Absolutely, and and that's how many years? How many years for me? It took uh, a good eight years. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I mean, so the average answer is four, which is at least an undergraduate degree. Uh, a would uh, eight years would be you know you'd you'd have your doctorate. And, uh, you know, a lot of people think they could do it sooner, George, and I don't care what uh, profession you uh, end up in, even if you're an electrician or you're a carpenter, uh, you're an apprentice for years and you're a journeyman for years before you become a master. So why should trading be any different? Absolutely, and uh, I'll take you to an example, Goldman Sachs will pay about a quarter of a million dollars to train a trader how to be effective within their own system. So, you know, and it takes multiple years yeah. for, them, for them to actually mature to become from a junior to somebody right. that, you know, they give a lot of control to. So when it comes to you doing it independently, it's going to require two things. One of them is to uh, develop a technical expertise in understanding the mechanics of the market. And be honest with you, that's the easy part. Then the second aspect of it Psychology. is emotional intelligence. Oh, is, good. I is like how, it. Is how do you process the information emotionally? How do you detach yourself from the outcome? This is a process-oriented business where 100% of your focus should be on following a rule-based system that uh, that uh, gets you in the market, gets you out of the market, helps you manage the trades, and emo your emotions needs to detach from it. It's I, I feel like it's uh, trading is, is, is a, a beautiful application of mathematics in a way. Okay. And yeah, easier said than done to get uh, your emotional paradigms under control, isn't it? What was the one thing that you have to work on. I mean, something I still work on is uh, very good at entries, risk management, sometimes not patient enough to uh, ride trades to objectives, targets, and the way I've learned to overcome that is taking partial profits so that at least I'm getting paid and I have something on if it continues to target. Um, also, uh, uh, being willing to take a loss, which all you have to do is, uh, if you're not willing, 
uh, you blow up an, an account or two and you learn to become willing to take a loss. So uh, that's my story. Yes, very well said there. And, uh, you know, from my perspective and angle, I learned the art of walking away. And that's in beautiful. Way, uh, how, how I felt managing my emotions works most effectively is I have a rule based system that the only decisions I make is one decision, which is how to enter the market. And the moment I entered the market, the, the, the rest of the rules that I have automated within my uh, structure and my system will literally uh, take care of everything else. So I come in there and I, and I look at my entry point, I look at the market condition. Uh, first, I have to figure out the structure of the market. What, what is the market that I'm looking at? Is it a short? Is it a long? Is it a stay away from market? Meaning there's no uh, decision that needs to be made. Once I figure that aspect of it, the next stage comes into play. And that stage is where is my, if it's a long market, where's my entry point? I love that walk away, George, because you don't change, yeah, you don't change your outcome by staring at it, do you? you now, I, now you, I've tried to teach people how to place a cursor over the candle in a trade they're in and drag it in the direction <laughs> of where they want the market to go and even use a magnet and it doesn't work. So why not walk away uh, if you're emotional? And, uh, you know, uh, I think that's a, a great strategy. And then you automated the rest of it after your entry. Absolutely. I will have to, t yeah, I like that. Okay. And, and one thing that you'll notice, I've, I've mentored hundreds of traders over the years, and two things that a struggling trader will do frequently. One of them is they're constantly and obsessively look over their P&L. And every trade they make, they look at how much money they made or how much money that they lost. And that automatically lay, raises their emotional engagement yeah. in the market and their blood pressure start rising. So one of the things I tell people, especially when they're starting off, is trust me on this and not look at your P&L for a whole week and only look at it at the end of the week on Friday at close of business. And every decision you make, just make on the basis of the rules that we talked about. And you'll be surprised how their mind shifts from being obsessive over P and L to being obsessive over the process of properly trading. And that's just one of the, the steps. Basically, uh, trade markets, not money. Money. That money is a side effect and a consequence of proper trading. But you never make it by looking at money. You make it by looking at your process and making sure that your process is in tune with how the market is behaving. So, so that's just- Great mentoring, George. Uh, you're natural. Uh, so, you know, uh, just because of a little bit of a time constraint, uh, beautiful looking Renko charts. Uh, uh, maybe you could talk to us a little bit about your setups here and why you turned to Renko, although it is Renko, right? But you, yes. you're keeping the wicks. Uh, a lot of people that trade Renko don't keep the wicks. Why did you keep them? Uh, because it gives you that reversal. So the okay. reversal, for example, here, it's a 12 tick reversal, and that is an important piece of information that I like to know uh, as price progresses. And those okay. tend to be a turning points in which I can get in and place my orders. Uh, the, the way your question was initially, why do you, why do you use Brinko versus time? I feel that, that in, from, from experience of many, many years, it, it, I want, it, Trading is almost connecting two dots in space. And the, you're really trying to measure movement between those two dots in space. So time tends to be deceptive in that, in that calculation because you're, you're measuring movement, you're not measuring time. So- Well, W.D. Gann would argue with you. I'm sure he would. But, you know, I, uh, for, for but my- it, he, It's very esoteric to grasp it. 
uh, GAN stuff, but you know, he he is one he's one market master who felt time was more important than price. Just bringing up the exception, buddy. Not the yeah, rules. absolutely, absolutely. And and you know, many it, ways to skin a cat, aren't there? Absolutely. And you know, there's a lot of uh, experts in, in market behavior that it, it, it it's there's different angles to look at yeah. this problem. It's how how effective are you with your vision and with with, with your point of view? Bingo. So, absolutely. So when I look at this market right there, I want to measure. Uh, in in a in a pure fashion, movement and movement only. And for example, it doesn't matter to me if it if it if it took between seven o'clock and seven fifteen for the price to break out. Uh, that that time is not significant. I just want to see the movement, and based on that movement, I'm making a decision. So how do I make a decision saying I want to be in out or be on the sideway? So I look initially at, and one of the markets, one of my favorite markets that I look at is NQ, crude, uh, and uh, you know sometimes I look at gold, and I, I heard you guys do a wonderful analysis on gold. Um, but initially, the first step of the process uh, is looking at the daily and seeing what price structure the market is in. And I, I can see from looking at this that NASDAQ 100 hit the bottom of the uh, of the range and the channel, and it's bouncing back. So there's buyers stepping in. But that's just a structural look at the market. We have to dig deeper. So the second aspect of it is looking at the 20 NT Rinko. And in the 20 NT Rinko, I'm looking at a couple of things. We, we developed a, a swing trade indicator, and those are the lines that you see, T1, T2, T3. And what it does, it gives you an entry point and it gives you a target based on volatility. So as the market is moving, it calculates based on uh, the behavior of the market, what are the range and where is uh, uh, a proper entry, where's the stop and where are the targets. So we use that along with the cloud that you see here uh, as a guide. You want the swing trade indicator along with the cloud to give you the same story, meaning the market is short. So we go from there to a, a smaller wrinkle value of 12, and you want that story also to be the same. Then once that those two are in sync, you come to the 6NT wrinkle, and you want that story to also be the same, meaning that the market is short on the 20, short on the 12, short on the 6. Whenever you have that environment, what you have in front of you is a structural environment that's long. Uh, so all the pictures, there's a synergy and harmony between all the variables that all define. All the time frame, TFs. Well, they're not time frames, they're uh, amount of candles. Amount right? of candles and motion and structure. Right. Okay. So it's measured by the cloud, it's measured by the swing trade indicator, and it's measured by the behavior. So once we have that synergy and harmony between all those three elements, I have an environment where I can uh, look for an entry point, and the entry points come in the form of retracements into the middle of the line. So that would be, for example, uh, I mean, that's not a you know, perfect example here, but it's a retracement to the middle of the range and then an entry point. And the same thing as as the price goes, uh, that, that would be an entry point in which we start managing from there. And we have a very, uh, uh, a very well put together, uh, you know, entry point and the risk is known and the targets will be known as well as the price progress. And then at that point, once the, the trade is entered, um, the best thing I could do is I've done my job. I feel like I've done my job. There's nothing else for me to do. So it, me micromanaging the trade after entry, if you look at the sample of all your trading, it's counterproductive. You always end up, end up doing the what opposite to what you should be doing, which is some, a lot of times you see trades taking profits too early or stay too late and end up missing on their profit targets. Or the worst case scenario for a newbie 
is the average in a trade in a martingale approach trying to break even or make money and and you, then you see your you know your account blow up after a blow up after a blow up so uh, to avoid that cycle uh, a rule based system is typically the best approach uh, define your environment and define one thing which is your entry and have a system for your exit and walk away it will be the best thing you'll ever do walk away have any uh, macro view on nasdaq here uh, we had that big sell-off with facebook and everything last week it's trying to recover is your work saying we're going to have a failing rally or a new high it's uh, you uh, i'll tell you one thing the big picture is the market let me pull that chart up as we talk give me a second here here we go thank you so that's the big picture so the big picture here is that that move those two candles that we're seeing here are significant the the overall trajectory of price action is 7000 you had a, an inside day yesterday right. and today we're breaking that end so you may get a bounce here that bounce could be to let me see this price here you're looking at let me move your thing here we go all right 70 7333 that's an area that you will see a lot of attachment to but right. within that middle of that range the 50 percent of that move is somewhere around 61. up to that level you can get a bounce then the market is going to consolidate and start chopping up in this area and potentially break that channel now okay. i'm always ready and prepared for any eventuality i don't walk into the market with a pre no biases uh, no biases i literally am a uh, my research is literally less than five minutes every single day and that's all it is and then i come in and uh, I turn on my monkey hat, and I'm a monkey. Right. And I sit there, and if everything lines up and it's a long, I take it. And if it's a short, I take it. And if it's uh, if it's neither, I stay away. Uh, I view trading uh, in the form of a model, and what I'm showing you right here is is the signals that generated last month. Uh, there are two forms of signals. One of them called uh, inception trade which is the beginning of a trend and the first continuation that's basically meaning the first test of this new trend so we uh, so everything is basically or calculated and counted for in this format and this is this is how I know that my edge works or doesn't work over time so and what's your what was your hit rate last month about 60 70 percent 80 83 percent okay 80%. and so out of 50 decisions that were made and those are let me see let me just make sure that i got 51 decisions that i that that was made by the system uh, nine of them failed okay so you're at 84 and okay. that generated depending on the model that you take for example if you're taking four contract model uh, you're looking at 8300 dollars uh, you're looking okay and two contract is is less but the the point is this is the equity curve for two contracts for the past three months and every single trade coming in coming in including up to the 31st yesterday okay well what's been your worst you know it's great to show the good times what's your worst drawdown in the last few years few years i've had yeah. uh, uh a fifteen thousand dollar drawdown uh, percentage uh, percentage was about 20 percent okay so what's your business model George uh, do you sell the software um, uh, you're looking for subscribers why don't you tell us the best way for people that heard you live or are going to watch a recording uh, the best way to get a hold of you and follow up if they have an interest absolutely so you, you could reach us at support at HarmonyTradingSystem.com, and uh, you know, basically our model is we want to we have developed an environment 
for traders to come to our chat room and interact with us in a way where we're heavily interested in you becoming a successful trader. I, I, w I went through the process of learning how how to do this effectively for myself, and I want to, you know, give that knowledge and give that structure to the people who are interested. And um, you know, I have a love for helping people. I have a love for talking about the markets, and it's just that one of those big passions for me. So you could come in, and I'll, I'll give everybody that's listening today a one-month free trial. So they could come in there and see for a whole month every single trade that the model is is producing and every single trade that we are taking in the room and make a decision based on that information, real information, how they want to interact with us. We They can come and buy the software, which has a mathematical edge to it. How and much it, is that? Uh, that is uh, $3,000. Okay. And uh, then you could come in and be... Uh, in the room with us without the software and just follow the signals and and uh, that's 250 and there's there's other programs that uh, that uh, uh, we can talk to you about and the big idea is is be in an environment where people are truly interested in helping you uh, when we take on a student everything is one on one meaning that I take a student in it's not going to be, I'm going to give you a bunch of videos for you to look over and learn this. No, I'm going to be with you on the phone. I'm going to take you through every signal and show you how it worked in my account and how it worked in, in, in the market. And I'm, I'm, I'm my vested interest in making you successful. Obviously, the trader has to put a lot of work into it. But I have to, as a mentor, um, do you right by being there for you. So every day... I receive from my traders their trading, every single trade that they make in their account. And I will give them analysis back to them on what I think they, they ways to tweak it. So this way they can enhance their results. And that's an ongoing process. Well, you know, I was going to call you my trading warrior brother, but I'll call you my trading warrior monkey. Uh, I think that... Uh, <laughs> You know, it's been great meeting you and uh, very interesting work that you do. And uh, from what I could tell, you're a natural teacher and uh, wish you and your mentees all the success in the world, George. Thanks Absolutely. for coming in today. Thank you very much for hosting me. I'm just going to put a link in the room for for the room for people that want to take uh, advantage of the offer of a one, one month free. And uh, again, you could uh, reach us at support at harmonytradingsystem.com. Uh, thank you, Dale, for the time, and uh, really glad to meet you. Okay, George. Good hunting, buddy. Thank you. Have fun. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, everyone, that's a wrap. Uh, he posted it right there. Well, let's see if it uh, came through. Does it did. that look right? Okay, yeah. perfect. Have a good one. All right, George. Okay, Jacques, everyone else, good hunting. See everyone tomorrow at Harmony Trading, Michael. Thanks again, George. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. See everyone mañana. Adios.